In this video, we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the auto-switching features in the Rodecaster Pro versus the A10 Mini. But wait, you're asking, the A10 Mini doesn't have an auto-switch feature. Well, you are correct. There is no built-in auto-switching feature in the A10 Mini or the A10 Mini Extreme or really any of the Atoms. However, there is a fantastic third-party application called Mix Effect, and that is an iPad app you can use to control your ATEM. It actually gives you a lot of control over the different features in the ATEM, and it's often a lot easier to use than the software control in the computer. So I've got Mix Effect loaded up right here, and you can see it's got similar buttons that you would see in the software control, but it has a lot of other features here, and you can do a lot of things here faster than you can do in the software on the computer. And one of the features this has is an auto switching feature. The developer of this application built in an auto switch feature. It's called Video Follows Audio. So that's what we're going to use for the ATEM. So before we can actually look at the demo, we're going to have to configure the auto switching feature in both the Rodecaster and in Mix Effect. Let's start with the Rodecaster. So to get started with the Rodecaster, you're going to have to download Rode Central, and this is where we're going to set things up. If I go look at the scene builder, you'll see in here that I've got three different camera angles input into the Rodecaster right now. I've got a wide shot of this podcast setup, I've got a close up of me and a close up shot of Lily. Each of these has their own audio feed routed into the Rodecaster and that's the important part that's gonna make this work. So we're actually gonna get out of this and we're gonna go into the auto switching tab. So this is where you can configure how auto switching works. Essentially what you do is you tell it which of the camera angles you want to be auto switched to and you tell it which audio channels are mapped to which camera angle. So I first actually have to configure my audio. This is the audio configuration. You can do this part on the Rodecaster itself, but I find it a little bit faster to do it in the software. This is where we're gonna choose which audio channels are being brought into the stream at all. And in my case, in for my test clips, I've actually got the audio for each of the camera angles routed into the HDMI 2 and 3. So if you look back at the Rode Multiview, you can see that my close-up angles of me and Lily, actually in these recordings, I've brought in our microphone audio through that same camera angle which is one way to do it. You could of course also do it with wireless mics or XLR mics. So back to the audio configuration, you can see I've turned on HDMI two and three for the audio channels and we're not gonna use these, but I'll leave them on anyway, just in case. Now that the audio channels are set up and we're actually hearing the right audio in the stream, we go to the auto switching tab and this is where the magic happens. So here for the wide shot, I'm gonna turn this on, set it to low priority, and I'm gonna tell it which of the audio channels that I've configured are visible in this shot. So here for audio links, I'll go and say, I have HDMI two, and HDMI 3 in that shot, because again, that's the shot of both of us. Now I'll do the same thing for here. So I'm gonna turn this camera angle on, I'll set it to high priority, and I'll tell it which of the audio channels are mapped to this video channel. So in this case, I am being brought in through HDMI 2 and my audio is as well. But this is where you could say, for example, this person's holding wireless mic one, but in my case, I'll do HDMI 2. Lily's camera angle, I'll set her to high priority as well, and her audio is being brought in through HDMI 3. So that's what it looks like to set this up. And again, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of audio mapping, but the options for the auto switching are relatively limited. Essentially, you just get to choose the priority of each of the angles. So I've got the two close up shots set to high and the wide shot set to low. Now that that's configured, we can actually turn this on. To actually turn on auto switching, you just hold down on the auto button for two seconds and it'll turn blue and now auto switching is enabled. So if we go and look at the multi-view, we should be seeing it switch automatically between the different camera angles. Okay, so that's a setup for the Rodecaster. Let's now switch gears and go look at setup for the ATEM. Now again, the ATEM does not have a built-in auto switch feature. So instead we're gonna use the app mix effect. So this is the mix effect app on my iPad. And you can see down on the left side, there's all sorts of different things this can do, but we're gonna focus on the audio tab. So here I'm gonna click on audio and you can see the different audio sources that are being brought in to the application. We have the two different camera angles, camera two and three are turned on. And this is where the audio is being brought in from the podcast. So I'll switch back to the multi-view here so you can see what angles are set up. Camera one is the HDMI one is the wide shot, HDMI two is the close-up of me and three is Lily. So again, the audio for those is being brought in through the HDMI port where those are plugged in. So the audio mapping in this example will be easy. So first I've turned on the cam two and cam three audio and I don't want cam one's audio on. Next we can go and actually configure the video follows audio feature. So I'm gonna tap on this little icon that has the decibel meter and that is the icon that's gonna let us configure the video follows audio. These are the options that show up. So you can say whether it's enabled for this audio source, whether you want to let this trigger when the source is actually not visible, which we do in this case. And then you could choose the audio level threshold for when it's gonna trip. Sample size is roughly 
how long you want it to be over that threshold before it actually triggers. So you can adjust how sensitive it is that way. And then you can choose what to do when it triggers. So in my case, I'm going to say change the program source to, in this case, HDMI 2. So here we're going to set source to camera 2. What I do need to do is take a look at my audio levels really quick to see where it's hovering when I'm speaking. So it looks like something between, it looks like, yeah, above 40-ish should be good. So this is set to, yeah, 37, so that's fine. Sample size 45, we'll see how it looks with that. I'll do the same thing for camera 3, which is Lily. So we're going to enable that. We're going to set the threshold to, let's just set it to about the same, and change the program source to camera 3. So now you might notice that there's no way to actually choose what happens when both people are talking or when there's silence. Actually, we might be able to do it when there's silence. Let's take a look at the master settings. And in this one, notice that the, the audio levels is set to less than instead of greater than. So what we can do is we can say if the audio for both actually drops low, drops quiet for long enough, in this case 300, we're gonna to change to the wide shot, which is in camera one. So this will let us do a camera switch when both of us stop talking. There isn't an option for looking at two different audio sources and doing something when they're both loud. So like when both people are talking. So that's about the best we can do in this case. I do need now need to turn on video follows audio, which is with this little VFA button under the master audio channel. One other thing we should do is actually double check which type of transition we're gonna do when these triggers happen. So I'm gonna go back into the cam two settings and transition style set to auto. I don't really like that. I'm just gonna do a hard cut because I don't really like the, the blurs or the wipes for the kind of quick edits that this is gonna end up doing. So I'm gonna make sure I go back into cam three and change that also to cut instead of auto. And also on the master one, change that over back to cut. Great. And now we can go ahead and turn it on. So I'm going to turn on VFA by pressing the VFA button up under the master audio settings. And I will show you the multi view of this to see how it's doing. So now as I'm talking, it should cut to me. And as Lily's talking, it should cut over to her. And if we both stop talking, which rarely happens in this, it should cut to the wide shot. So we'll see how it does with that. Okay, so that's your setup and some of the options of both. But I'm sure you're actually curious to hear what this actually sounds and looks like. So let's do a quick sample of the same video podcast being fed into both devices at the same time in a side-by-side -side comparison. Welcome to The House Files, a podcast about building a triplex in Portland, Oregon. Which mostly exists to talk you out of doing it. So I'm really feeling that right now. People keep asking me, like, casually, like, oh, when is the house going to be done? Yeah, yeah. And I have developed a collection of different guttural noises I make. <laughs> okay. Like, uh, <sighs> oh, it's not that bad yet. Save some of those for a little bit later. Well, it's, it's not, it's just that I have no idea. I, I just, I, I yeah. So apparently well, you made a calendar. Yeah. We do have a little bit more of an idea now. There's at least theoretically a, Three to eight month window. Three. It's a little bit better than that. But because things are actually progressing now and uh, the main thing, well, let's start with who's like this week. Turns out it's the weather. Uh, the weather has been holding us up. The reason we haven't been able to finish or to really like start much in, of, it, of the rest of the house has been because it's been raining. And as everybody has pointed out, uh, the house is a giant sop sopping wet pile of wood. And uh, it doesn't matter when you're framing, but at some point you do need it to be dry to keep going. Okay, so that was take one. That was pretty good. I noticed that the ATEM didn't cut to the wide shot enough, so I think I'm going to do a quick tweak in here and change the audio threshold uh, to raise this up and shorten the, the sample size gap for when it's going to cut to the... Oh, I just realized the switch wasn't even turned on for that one. There we go. Well, this kind of points out some of the other differences between the ATEM and the Rodecaster video. The Rodecaster video is very hands-off, few options. You kind of just get a couple switches and then it just runs and it goes and it's going to do its thing. You don't get a lot of control, but there's also fewer ways to mess it up. Whereas with the ATEM, well, in Mix Effect in particular, there's a ton of control. You get a ton of options, but it's also then easier to make a mistake like I just did. So let's try this again now that that's actually turned on and see how these both do. Welcome to The House Files, a podcast about building a triplex in Portland, Oregon. Which mostly exists to talk you out of doing it. So 
I'm really feeling that right now. People keep asking me like casually like, oh, when is the house going to be done? Yeah, yeah. And I have developed a collection of different guttural noises I make. <laughs> okay. Like, uh, <sighs> mm. uh, it's not that bad yet. I've saved some of those for a little bit later. Well, it's it's not... It's just that I have no idea. I, I just, I, uh, yeah. So apparently well, you made a calendar. Yeah, we do have a little bit more of an idea now. There's at least theoretically a... Three to eight month window. Three. It's a little bit better than that. But because things are actually progressing now and uh, the main thing, well, let's start with who's late this week. Turns out it's the weather. Uh, the weather's been holding us up. The reason we haven't been able to finish. So you can see they did make some slightly different decisions, but I did now this time see it cut back to the wide shot on the ATEM. One other thing I should mention is what happens if you want to break out of auto switching and cut to camera angle manually. So the Rodecaster right now, you can see it's in auto mode. This light is blue. And if I wanted to, for example, force this into showing one of the close-ups or sh show the wide shot or maybe cut to a fourth camera angle that would be like a computer screen. If I just tap that, it's going to immediately cut to that. And auto mode is actually now off. So that means we are broken out of auto mode and I'm in control now and it's not going to switch anything until I do something else. So I can, of course, cut, my, cut different camera angles myself or I can go back to auto mode by holding that down for two seconds. That, however, is different from mix effect. Mix effects video follows audio is always on even if you choose different camera angles yourself. So, for example, if I am if I'm in video follows audio mode here, and then I just go ahead and push on another angle, it's going to eventually trigger one of these rules and take over again. So you run the risk of a short accidental cut by pressing something manually because it may make a decision shortly after that to change angles based on the audio levels that are going on. So there's no sort of breaking out of auto mode other than actually turning it off back in the app. You can turn off entirely and then you are in control again. One of the other really cool features that MixEffect has, uh, because it's an ATEM, is actually running the video follows audio and manipulating the super source with it. Let me show you what I mean by this. This super source feature is unique to the ATEM Mini Extreme. The ATEM Minis don't have it. It's in the larger constellations as well, but the super source is what lets us do that side-by-side -side layout. So you can see here, I've got a couple different presets that I can use, or you can actually customize the layout completely and put it on top of a background. So again, what I've got here is I've got the two close-up shots side-by-side, -side, and we can send that to program as well. And this can be nice if you're, especially if you're doing a podcast with a remote guest, for example, where you don't have the people in the same room. But what Video Follows Audio can do in Mix Effect is actually animate that super source in real time. So let me show you what that looks like. So this is what it looks like to configure super source in the mix effect app. And this is actually a lot easier to do than doing it in the software control from Blackmagic. This comes with a bunch of preset layouts, but you also can create your own and you can visually edit them by just dragging them around on here as well. It's really nice. So if we go back to our audio feature, our audio tab, and then configure the video follows audio, instead of action changing program source, we're going to remove that action. And down here under super source, we're going to change super source action to highlight. So this is for camera two and that's me and I'm in box two in super source. So we're going to highlight box two and I'll go do the same thing for Lily's camera, which is camera three. Camera three is going to, instead of changing the program source, we're going to highlight. In this case, she's in box one. So the triggers will be the same and we're going to go ahead and save that. And now we're going to, oh, I should also turn off the action on the on the main camera because we don't want to cut away from super source now. So let's imagine, for example, you're doing this podcast with a remote guest. So it's just your feed and their feed coming in and you're just going to have it on the super source layout the whole time. So I'm going to turn video follows audio on. And now when I show you the side by side of the super source layout, you can see that as one of us talks, it's going to actually just animate that box. So it'll kind of emphasize whoever is speaking. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of what it's like to use the auto switching or video follows audio features in the Rodecaster video, as well as the ATEM Mini Extreme with mix effect. As you can see, they are both quite different in terms of how you set them up and the features they support, but they are both pretty good. And I feel like they actually both did a pretty good job of auto switching, didn't do any cuts that were too fast, didn't really hold on one angle for too long. It felt pretty natural, at least from what I saw. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And thanks again to Rode for sending me the Rodecaster video to share with you 
you on the channel. And thanks to Adam from Mix Effect for sharing Mix Effect with me. He sent me a beta version a long time ago, and I've had a really great time playing around with it and trying out these different features. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.